Tales from my D&D campaign. Previously, after loud unlocking sounds, it powers open, revealing a ten-foot space, then another door. Three doors? I'm getting out my Geiger counter. Actually, Angel can hear faint voices from the other side. Only thing we've heard talking in here is Alpha. <laughs> Warning, a breach has occurred within the Elder's lab. Personnel should evacuate immediately. Oh my god, they made a mutant beholder. I told you it was a vampire. We still have those one-shot dimensional anchor daggers from the Adar place. It may not stop him from transferring, but it would stop him from actually teleporting away. I expected better from that thing. Oh well, I've got to go. You know how it is. Places to be, continents to devastate. Think dagger him. Dagger him. Or not. Clank, clank, clank. They are now close to the bottom of the atrium, as they round the next corner after the Eldritch Lab's hidden door into yet another covered bridge. The last one before the core. As they look up, around the ceiling of the walkway, there is 80 feet of vertical space between each outer ring of magma, such that the first bridge where they entered the atrium is now hundreds of feet above them, the height of a 30-story building. There's still at least a couple helicopter-like magma sifters flying around up there. There seem to be fewer now, but it's hard to tell because they're difficult to spot looking up from below. Are we gonna get, like, swamped in lava? That would be fun, but not right now. In the tunnel up ahead, you can see an obstruction. A number of damaged golems are strewn across the hallway, apparent victims of golem-on-golem violence. A lot of stuff must have happened while we were resting. You notice some bubbling in the lava, and the saucer section of one of those flying drones nearly submerged, like 90% sunk there. So that one's recent. Like that stupid alpha. That is the same type you just saw him using. Roll your spot? Yeah, I spotted it. I already give you the semi-difficult stuff. What did you actually get? 45. You could swear you saw some movement out of the corner of your eye, further down the surface of the lava, like something moving into cover. But the surface of the lava does move on its own, occasionally bubbles or sloshes. You could just be going crazy after being on edge for so long in this place. Yeah, that's probably what it is. There's nothing better than a spot check for hallucinations. Are you paranoid? I'm paranoid standing next to you. The golems have suffered varying degrees of damage. Some barely went down, others have been torn apart. Suspicious of Dark Ancients playing dead, Black casts Earth Reaver, dealing a bunch of damage in a 20-foot radius, and making a lot of noise, but gets no reaction from them. Swangel skitters over top of them to check out the door beyond. I can get out pretty fast if there's lava behind it. If any door was going to have lava behind it, probably would have been the airlock doors with the hazard stripes. Angel rolls badly on her lock-picking check, so she just casts Knock again. Sure, it makes a loud noise, but after Black's Earth Reaver spell, anyone listening would already have been alerted. This large room appeared to be a sizable armory, similar to the security room near the entrance, with numerous golems, a fire suppression system, a sphere, and three more doors leading off. There was also some other machinery whose purpose was not immediately obvious, though it may have been for working on golems. But although the room still looked like a tough fight, Clearly, there would have been a lot more golems in here if they weren't piled up outside the door and in the Eldritch Lab. All personnel must evacuate this area immediately. Due to the current security situation, it is not safe in this part of the facility. Yeah, because we opened that other room up. The lab? Everything in there's dead. Alpha did something. We gotta stop it. We aren't gonna be able to stop it. It'll be fine. Actually, that helicopter thing that's in the lava? That could have been his. So he could be in this room now, doing shit. Some units don't have visible eyes, like spheres and magma sifters, and based on your experience, Dark Ancients don't have to make their eye glow obvious all the time. Certainly Dell must have been hiding it for ages. Watch, we walk in and all the eyes turn red. We'd be like, oh shit! Wait a second, I wonder if it's possible to fool him. If he's in this room, if I turn myself into stone. All your plans are just turn into stone. Pretty much. Would I look enough like a construct? You'd look like a stone statue. Yeah, you wouldn't look like Yataran constructs. All the ones you've seen are metal. The good news is, the room hasn't aggroed. Yet. We could just go in, see if they react. Don't touch anything. Hey, I learned my lesson the first three times. First three times. What? I'm naturally curious. So, the controller's behind one of those doors? Is it? 
Well, you find the path wore off when you rested, and Polaron's layout has you going around in circles, but you guys could figure out that, relative to the bridges, this isn't where your spell was pointing. It was more over that way. We don't have to go through this room? Then I'm in favor of skipping it. Oh, okay. Don't bother going in then. We'll go to the control room. After we make him draw out and describe this whole huge room. That's fine. It's still there. And now we know what's inside. Yep, you can go on to the controller, and all this will be behind you. Yeah, it's fine, he says with some uncertainty. There's nothing that a GM can't say in a disconcerting way. The main hallway takes a big squared off U-turn here before turning into an even steeper down ramp. But in the middle of the U-bend is a smaller hallway branching off away from the facility's central atrium. Near the entrance of this tunnel is a golem, minus a foot, which appears to have been sliced off by a set of vertical force bars. Beyond that is a full force field, then alcoves containing two conducting golems, a fire suppression unit, and, and one unit of a type they hadn't seen before. But past all the shields and metal is a room with a floor of lava, and in the middle of that square room, a round pillar topped with an orb. Lava for floor doesn't make sense. You could have, like, an obsidian floor. The other facility had an orb sitting in the middle of a room, and that was the controller. And this one's surrounded by lava. Yes, the other one had water. Right, and the other one made pillars of ice. And kept shooting ice at us. Oh, and the ceiling is also lava, just as Ginneron controller's floor and ceiling were water. Unlike Ginneron, there is a metal grate from the tunnel mouth over to the controller's pillar. So instead of frozen ice and water bullshit, it'll be lava. lava. So it gets pissed off, shoots up pillars of lava. You know, it's a graded floor. We can't even walk in there. We're gonna get hurt. Are there any dead golems inside the room? No, they all seem fine. No dead golems is a good sign. If Alpha had wanted to take the control sphere, he could have done it any time. Maybe not. I can't remember. That controller that we fought, was that because Alpha took it over? The Dark Ancient did take over the controller. You guys were talking to it until then, and it was fine. So basically, we could talk to this thing, but he wants to take this over and screw us over and kill us all. Based on your experience with him so far, that does seem like 100% his MO. I'm going to cast Mass Resist Energy Fire. Fire? Why would you choose fire? I don't know. But it does last 150 minutes and give us each 30 fire resist. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I've been wondering why he didn't look up that spell like a year ago in real time. Does that protect against lava? Actual lava does 20d6 if you touch it, or arguably if you're very close to touching it. So it would still inflict significant damage, no getting around that. But if you aren't touching lava, 30 is a lot of resistance. Before interacting with that. Angel takes a peek around the corner, spotting another door, followed by an almost unwalkable 45 degree ramp, descending the 80 feet to the very lowest bridge of the atrium. The bridge which extends to the cylinder in the center of the lake of lava. But there's also a warforged near the door, sitting with his back propped up against the wall. Unlike the other warforged you've seen, this one does not seem to have rotted away. Its fibrous bundles are still intact. And actually, looking at it more closely, you're pretty sure this is actually Temple One. What? Didn't he leave that body behind? No, when he activated the portal at Ginneron, the orb went dark, he taunted you one last time from this body, and Dimension Doored out with it. We did see a hologram of it up top. Okay, that's odd. He must have jumped into another body at some point. Unless this controller has been so effective that it's actually protected itself from him. Well, it has been. It's been fighting him. All those golem bodies. You're right. Some of that is he has to jump away from bodies when he gets in a fight because the damage he takes in golems gradually piles up on him. So they decide to investigate that room first. And in passing, little one smashes the legless golem's head. Just to make sure. You know what powdered sugar looks like? Make it look like that. I walk up to this thing and alpha strike it. Nice. The yellow glow surrounds the force field. All personnel must evacuate this area immediately. Due to the current security situation, it is not safe in this part of the facility. All personnel should immediately evacuate to the surface. Let us help you fight him! You just going to step up and say that? Yeah, I have diplomacy. Shit. Can I roll again? I don't have diplomacy, so I'll have to use my strong suit. Intimidation. No. No. Mora got a 30. What's she saying? We're hunting the Dark Ancient down. We need help. Where is he? Ooh, not bad. 
That's good. He must know where he is. The security situation has degraded to the point that we cannot accept such an offer. First priority is maintaining control of the facility. You must evacuate this area now. So, are we a detriment to the control of the facility, or not? Status is... Status is... Unconfirmed. Okay. Can you locate the area of the disturbance? The enemy moves rapidly throughout the facility. The enemy is a dark ancient. You know what that is? I think it knows exactly what it is, to protect itself from it. We have determined its capabilities experimentally. Huh, smart. About two minutes ago, was it located in the lava over there, where I saw something moving? Unknown. I screwed up my first diplomacy check, but I'm trying again. If you let us help you, you're guaranteed to catch him. This will be the third dark agent we killed. Several more ran away. I personally killed two of them. Your guarantee is impossible. This facility has been incapable as of yet of disrupting the entity. That's because we haven't been here. And it can't take control of us. Probably. We just got here and just wailed through your forces. Uh, well... <clears throat> Can you communicate with us throughout the whole facility? Yes. Can you just give us directions to current locations? Like, hot, cold, hot, cold, and we try and eliminate your threat? Once the entity manifests, we lose vision from that unit. We are then able to pursue it only using the senses of other units. What unit does it have right now? Uncertain. It is not in view of any other units. Are you able to repair the ones you lose sight of? Return them to functionality? It is possible to restore units once the entity has left them. However, during the last 24 hours, it has been impossible to repair units at the rate they are being destroyed. We are helping! You're helping! Well, to be honest, some's our fault, some's the system's fault. Well, to be honest, it's more your fault. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. When, when I say we, I really mean me. We all know that. It's pretty much my fault. Oh, what's your most effective combat unit? And do you have control of it at the moment? You are not authorized for that information. Fair. I, I don't care what it is. I just want to know if it's yours or his. Are you in control of your best combat unit? You are not authorized for that information. All right, let's go. It's not a bad question. I thought it was a good question. He probably has that one behind him, guarding him. I hope so. There's not a lot of room back there. One of the defensive units in front is something you haven't seen yet, but from what you can see, it doesn't look any bigger or more impressive than the others. Soon, they're standing over the body of the Warforged they thought they knew as Temple One, outside the next room. Is it? I don't know wrong to deface this guy's body. The controller claimed it can reboot its golems, but it seems that once Warforged get possessed, whatever was once there is gone for good. Whoever this one was before it woke from stasis and was taken over, it's long gone. So they beat the pulp out of Temple One, Angel picks the lock, and they check out this room. It's not a mere image of the armory on the other side. This one is smaller, but it's densely packed with Ataran robots, including a pair of this strange new model. But the focus of attention was the back wall, covered in crossbows and ammunition, some of which was displayed almost like a shrine, and a crystal tube near the back, in which a crossbow with an unusual silhouette was hovering. Ooh, crossbow floating in a tube. A crossbow floating in a crystal tube? Just like Ballista throw her into it. The secondary armor is off limits due to the current security situation. Do we want the crossbow? Yes. Of course we want the crossbow. Stupid question. Hey, you know what's awesome? We've already got fire resistance, so I can just blistering radiance. Okay, how far from the door is the crystal thing? About 35 feet. But there's another relevant thing. When you look into the room, you notice two invisible shield units on the ceiling. Of course there is. Okay. You can police to throw me into one of them, I'll get it, then you take out the other one and we're good. How about this? Alright, we close the door and walk away. There, there's a lot of shit in there. I mean, let's be honest. There's a lot of shit in there. There is a lot of shit in there. Maybe we can come back later, after we prove ourselves to this damn condescending controller that we can actually help with its problem. Killing the Dark Ancient. The question is, what is Temple One doing here? He can't have jumped into one of them. There's a direct line of sight from Temple One to that goal, and vice versa. So he tried and got cut off? And now he's in one of these f***ing... He's in here! He's in here, right now! Right in here! It kind of looks like one of the ranged workers is missing. Well, that's fine. I hope we can catch him in a little range thing. Could it be hiding in here? 
there's not a lot of space in here to hide. The cylinder is transparent, and even the workers are actually medium-sized. They're not that small or that agile, so it'd be pretty hard to hide one behind a bigger golem's leg or something. Hey, controller, where's that range bot? Unknown. Yeah. Guess what? You can't see it? That's the Dark Ancient. Or he's already jumped into something else. Where right now can you not see? There are a number of locations. Well, you need to get better at your job. It doesn't actually have cameras everywhere. It just sees whatever the constructs see. It doesn't have sensors over the entire place, I can tell you that. What's with the crossbow? The secondary armory is a strategic reserve in case of reinvasion from the Deadlands. Oh. Oh. Oh, so this is what we need before we invade the Deadlands. What's the Deadlands? I'm assuming it's the other plane. We're presuming it means the Shadowfell. You guys did translate one of those books from Ginneron that featured memoirs of warforged who fought in the Dead Wars. Could you send one of your small units to escort us? It would give you vision over us, and you could point out any golem you can't see from. We can already see the eyes, right? But not all of them have eyes. The controller can still tell. Point out anything you can't see from? We take it out. Boom. I can provide an escort, but all personnel should immediately evacuate to the service. We will, once we get Alpha. Here's the thing. We're not personnel. Yes, we are. I'm wearing a badge, damn it. That is uncertain. Okay, let's not fight the giant room for the crossbow yet. Don't get me wrong, we aren't leaving without it. The drone will let us know, that golem is not connected. He can't hide from us. Until he takes over the one with us. But then the controller can... Are we screwing ourselves by wearing these badges right now? No. No. I feel like we are. Why? Because she thinks we're personnel and we don't have the clearance. You'd rather she thinks we're intruders? Intruders definitely have the clearance. The uncertainty is why she's even talking to us, and not nuking us. And she has enough there to do it. Thirty seconds later, one of the basic stabbing workers, and also one of the ranged workers, come around the corner, stopping about fifteen feet away. That's her thinking, that if one falls, the other can warn us. They're like our dogs to sniff out Alpha. I like it. With their escort in tow, they scramble down the ridiculously steep ramp to the final bridge. Due to the ceiling covering the short walkway, they can't see the dome above them from here, but they come face to face with a really, really really serious looking door, which leads into the cylinder. What the hell does Alpha want here? Control of that military unit? And maybe to open a portal to the Deadlands. What was it he said? I have places Places to be, continents to devastate. For all we know, this place could open portals elsewhere in the world, and flood other places with undead. Hold on a second. I want to ask the controller something. Our guys are right here. It seems to be talking to you guys now. So this Alpha guy has been here for quite a while. The intruder has been attempting to gain access to this facility for approximately four weeks. So why the high level of security now? The facility has been penetrated far more deeply in the last 24 hours, and unit casualties have accelerated dramatically. Okay, so we're the reason. (laughs) Yeah. He can only do so much by himself. We seem to be able to do massive damage. Controller, what's this room here? You are standing before the core of the facility. You think Alpha's in here? I don't know, man. I'm so gonna ram my spear up his ass. I don't care if it's ineffective. Are are we opening this door? Why the hell do we want in the core? It doesn't sound like a good idea to me. Nah, it's fine. Okay, you open the door then. No, that's not my job. I'm not the door opener. I get a 37. You're making some progress, but you're not there yet when the yellow light surrounds the door. This area is strictly off limits. You sense that the door is being further reinforced somehow. I fear we're gonna get company. So knock. I can do it. This door is off limits to all personnel at this time. You must immediately evacuate to the surface. We just tried to get in and we couldn't. I bet Alpha's not in there. Yeah, Alpha's not in there. What would happen if we shut down the core? I'm guessing a lot of collapsing as lava flows down. Melt the whole pool. That just sounds like poor design. And probably Alpha will be able to get in anywhere he wants. We've got the bots with us. We should go back to do a search of those other two rooms. I've got an idea, but she may not go for it. What? Have the controller order every golem, every single unit to destroy itself, except when it needs to be able to repair them. The flying ones, the workers, everything. But it can't control the one Alpha's in. It won't shut down. And that'll be the only one left. Nowhere to escape. Well, sure. You want to try convincing the controller? Well, we got two options. We can ask her to do it, Or we can do it ourselves. (laughs) Really, what are we doing here? I want that crossbow. Yeah, the point is to get the crossbow. Now, it would also be nice to gain control of the facility for our own research and other purposes. And there's only one way we're going to do that. Convince the controller we should be the new masters. Or we kill it. That's two ways. 
or we have to be helpful. It would be nice if we could not kill the controller and convince it we were the new masters or something, but that would be a hell of a use magic device check. Well, there's that. That's another option. Or maybe you put on the little suit and maybe... That's a possibility. I could put on the suit and order it to shut down every unit in the facility. I have a crazier idea. What's your crazier idea? Let Alpha take over the controller and hope he doesn't nuke the place. Then destroy him. I told you it was crazy. Yeah, but Alpha's trying to get to the controller already. Help him. How? Give him what he wants, trigger a boss fight, then win. We can take him out as the controller. It's just a sphere. What's it gonna do? We've done it before. We live. You guys actually ran away from the other controller, for the record. It was beating the crap out of you. Now, Part of the problem was you weren't fully committed to destroying it from the start, and you took a lot of extra damage while some of you valiantly tried to find another way. On the other hand, that was a room full of water instead of lava. Really? We want to show up to the controller and be like, here's his head. There's no head. He's like a dark energy entity. Okay, I found a spell. I cast Locate Creature on Alpha. Kit, let's just shut off the core. Take this whole place down. We'll always have that option, but with Locate Creature, we can follow Alpha and hunt him down. If that doesn't work, then we can look at more drastic measures. Right, I like that too. We'll try that first. No save, no SR. As long as he's within 920 feet, it works. So I cast Locate Creature. Now let's see. I knew where he was a little while ago, but I have to figure it out again. This is a pretty big facility, but 920, 920 covers pretty much everything. Even if he was up in the death cannon room, you find out he's the controller. Ah! The direction you're getting is directly ahead of you, but very steeply up. I could cast my flight buff and carry angel. Yeah, but we'd have to go up through the heat. But we have fire resistance running. Let's just go through the heat. We can do mass flight. It's much more direct. What if flight got dispelled? That'd be some shit. I'd survive. I have one maneuver that lets me fly briefly. I'd just charge to the top of a bridge. I'd just believe in Sirius and melt. Though, I could cast stone form, then die more slowly. I'd rather die quickly. Or, preferably, someone cast Dimension Door. Though, I might survive long enough to get out. If, if Draven cast mud to stone, it would heal me to full. Yeah, you keep saying that. Really? If we're all in the lava... Nobody's casting anything. If we all fall into lava, it's game over. Let's be honest. Okay, so mass fly. Wait, before you waste a casting of mass fly, I stick my head over the railing. What? See if it's safe now with the resistance. Oh, I see what you're saying. You can feel that it is hot, but it's less painful than sticking your hand in the oven now. No damage. All right. Aren't you glad I'm slightly masochistic? So do you mass fly your NPCs too? Liz and Rainbow Dash? I get to ride flying Rainbow Dash? Awesome. I keep forgetting we have Rainbow Dash. Yeah, me too. Mora casts Haste. So with Mass Resist Fire, Mass Fly, and Haste, they take flight into the burning red-orange space of the atrium, leaving their robot escorts behind. After all, Raven can sense the Dark Ancient's direction for himself now. As they start out, they note that it gets much hotter when close to the lava, such that they will take some damage if they stray within 10 feet of it, but otherwise they take no damage from the incredible heat. The only complication is that each of them has to stay within 30 feet of one of the others, or that person will lose their fly buff. As they head out and up, Raven spell lets him sense that the target is moving, and it quickly becomes apparent that the Dark Ancient is not just flying, but is aware of them and is attempting to keep the bridges between himself and the party, as they wheel around, catching only glimpses of yet another of the helicopter-like magma sifters. Can we see him? Only occasionally. He seems to be maneuvering to keep the bridges between you. Fly is maneuverability good. We must fly as well as he does, if not better. You'll have to make opposed dexterity checks to jockey for position. Each round, the Dark Ancient makes a dex check, and each of the PCs do the same. If the PC ties or beats his check for that round, they get a clear line of sight to target him with a ranged attack or spell, and in the first round, Angel, Mora, and Draven succeed, pulling tight over the bridge and getting a clear line of fire for a moment before the possessed magma sifter can duck under a lower walkway. I got a two. How did you get a two? Armor check penalty. Okay, um, make a reflex save. Fourteen. I'm going to assume your number one priority is to remain within thirty feet of one of the others, so you don't plummet to your doom. So while you roll shitty and struggle a bit at that, you accidentally veer too close to a trough of lava and take 17 fire damage through your resistance. Oh, 
That's fine. So your lagging behind can't get line of sight to him this round, but you are able to stay airborne. Black, you also can't get line of sight this round, but otherwise you fly just fine. I shoot it for one fire, four cold, and eight physical damage, plus six from Fell the Greatest Foe. These things are so f***ing immune to your one fire damage. I force orbit for 34. How many damage dice did you roll? 10. He takes 10 damage then. He used psionic damp power to take the minimum damage from your spell. That's for one spell, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it's an immediate action. It's not like a buff that sticks around. Warner shoots for eight damage as well, but the Dark Ancient does not fight back, instead spending all his effort to avoid them. So we do one more round of opposed dexterity checks, but this time the villain rolls really high and none of the heroes is able to outmaneuver him as he dives through the gap into the armory level bridge at full speed, essentially a controlled crash landing, skidding out of their view with the squealing, scraping noise of metal on metal. F it, we're going after him. As you streak down past the bridge, you see one million one ranged worker skittering the other way, then suddenly turning and running back where they came. Aww, they're still trying to follow us. Poor little guys. As we swing by the bridge, I yell out to the controller, retreat all your units into security rooms and shut them behind doors, he's coming. You made a good call shouting into the bridge because there's a much better chance it can hear you there than in the middle of the atrium where no personnel should ever be. He goes into either room, controller will pick him out like that. But he'll also have loads of bodies to jump around. We have to hope that the bots will focus him. He's got to be their number one priority. The party swoop down into the hallway over the wreckage they've seen before to find the magma sifter wedged under the armory door, physically blocking it from closing. So he's already in the room. Joy. Are we still picking up the Dark Ancient right there? No, he's inside the room. You can already hear fighting. There's definitely some rock'em sock'em robots going on. Let's go hell. If we can hit him with the dimensional anchor dagger, we have to man the door. Nothing gets out. He can bounce around all he wants in the room, but as long as he can't pour it out, we can get him. I think the theory was that if you could catch him alone, you could anchor him and he'd be stuck, unable to teleport. But if there are other bodies around, you don't know if dimensional anchor can stop him from possessing another golem, or if he could, you don't know whether the dimensional anchor spell would follow him or stay with the body. Either way, once he's in a room, it's all bad. Can you cast some kind of area thing that blocks teleportation? I know there are spells like that. They're all slow to cast, like minutes or hours, and they tend to cost a lot too. More meant for long term than for combat. I can tank this, and you can just keep recycling your ballista throw, tossing them into lava. Actually, if you want to, we could fight them near the edge. Another way is we open the door, I get my hands on Alpha, I ballista throw him back out of the room, and we beat the shit out of him in the hallway. Remember, he takes some of the damage. If we do a massive amount of damage, he'll die. He's going to all kinds of effort to avoid damage, and we just hit him for 30. Yep, yeah, he takes some fraction of that 30 body damage as real damage to himself. He's got to be hurting, because he's been fighting other golems all through this place. So they head in, most able to roll under the door easily, though Black would have to squeeze. Angel barely has to duck, but she chooses to slide in anyway, putting one hand on the door so she slides in, then up the wall, then casts Knock for the hell of it. That's some Mega Man shit. So, which one's Alpha? I'm assuming it's the fire suppression golem. Whatever's biggest and baddest. He's not worried about offense. He'll be in whatever is the toughest. You know it's this way, heading to a far room, but you can't pinpoint which one out of all the units over there. They all seem to be facing away from you, towards that same place, which means you can't see their eyes either. Controller, lock those doors down! You know, he's running away from us instead of just teleporting. It's possible he could be out of dimension doors. He'd have to be really low on stuff, because Scions run on points. I'm certain he'd save enough points for a dimension door. Doing that also takes three rounds to arrive and lets the controller know where he's going to be. The spherical slicing golem wins the initiative and attacks the fire suppression system next to the far door, which the party takes as confirmation that the Dark Ancient had possessed the ice-covered golem. Still hasted from the beginning of their flight only a few rounds ago, Mora shoots three times, unable to penetrate the golem's frost armor, but each shot chipping away at the protective ice, until Little One Searing charges it for 22 damage. Should I bother rolling the fire damage? It's 5d6. He starts the battle with 70 fire resist. Wow. Well, he is supposed to fight fires. The basic golems act, but most have a hard time getting into range to attack the possessed golem. We're just attacking the big one, right? Yeah. Nothing else is aggroed? They all seem to be going for the same target. It's a good thing one of them went before us. Hmm. 
he could cone of cold and wipe out a lot of things. But he opens the door. That controller doesn't stop him? I'm sure it would love to, but it has a limit to how much it can do at once. The door opens up to reveal a smaller room containing an upsized version of the geo-elemental power source they've seen before. Oh, I know what he's doing. He's in the fire suppression unit. Here comes the magma. You're always so many steps behind. He casts Energy Burst. Psionic Fireball? Not quite. That would be Energy Ball. Energy Burst is a power Scions don't usually learn because they have friends. It's a 40-foot radius burst centered on itself. Please be fire, please be fire. Nope. It's Sonic. Sonic? Really? Hey, Sonic deals minus one damage per die. It also ignores object hardness. I'm happy. Look where I am. It just misses me. Damn it. Some PCs save, but Angel actually takes the full 41 damage for once, because the saving throw against the Sonic power is Fortitude instead of Reflex, so her evasion doesn't apply. It damages a number of the golems around, including the Sphere, though some of them are protected by their spell resistance. But for all the combat damage this does, it also impacts this equipment over here, and does a bunch of damage to the controls on this side of the power source. Oh, that's why he went Sonic. Now, technically the lava doesn't come up these cylinders. They require a shaft down to a volcanic ley line, and equipment goes down into it. Ah, I was kind of hoping for magma. But there's a lot of sparking, and the lights flicker severely, and when they come back on, the level of illumination in the room is very dim, like emergency lighting. He's drinking our treasure! He's gonna wreck the facility so we can't use it! Alright, I'm not f***ing around here. It's gonna be a maximized orb of force. So damned expensive. But he's drinking our treasure! What do you say as you do that? You're drinking our treasure! No, that doesn't make sense. It's not like I invented it. Graven doesn't really have a catchphrase. You know what you should say? That belongs in a museum! A huge beam of energy shoots out from the wand attachment of Graven's custom crossbow. And he dampens it. Takes minimum damage, so 10. Ah, oh, I forgot about that. That costs some power points, right? Yes, but not as many as you'd like. No, not enough to be worth 5 charges. What's it again? Damp power? I want to look it up. I don't know how to make it over there. But we're hasted, right? You should still have haste for a few rounds. You could blow your belt of battle. I could. I should, because this guy... He's like the end game to me. He'll probably just teleport away. We need the controller to clear the room. This ability costs three power points? Yes. That's f***ing bullshit! He can do that every round for almost no cost! Psionics are f***ing bullshit! He can only do it once per round, right? Correct. He can't do it again right now because it's an immediate action, and he already spent his for the round. So, if you can't do it again right now, I should sound lance him. Sound lance the shit out of him. If the controller could clear the room of all constructs, and I shove the dimensional dagger up his ass, we can beat him till he f***ing dies. Probably. This guy is bullshit. I'm getting madder and madder. Black gets a strong damage roll for his sound lance, and the Dark Ancient fails his fort save, taking all 48, after which his fire suppression system body was below half health. They've learned by now that you have to kill a Dark Ancient either by accumulated damage or by killing their body before they can jump to another one. Though, they usually have an emergency jump once per day ability, making that a little harder. Either way though, dealing more damage is ultimately their best way to get rid of him. Battle Belt, do it again? You could. Do it! He's drinking our treasure! All right, guilt of battle. First hand, boom. Second hand, hey, that's not bad. 46. Fail, 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 fail. No, he passed. Still takes 23, though. God damn it. That was good. I bet I could have dropped him, though. Mission accomplished, everyone. We've taken down his power supply. The controller can't possibly defend itself now. Everyone? He's trying to frame us? Those badges worked like a charm. What? How dumb do you think the controller is? Are the badges rigged? No, he's bluffing. I don't care what he says. I'm stabbing him till there's nothing left to stab. The workers act, but while a few of them shoot, most pause and do nothing as though confused. Then, at the top of the round, the sphere golem whirlwinds... everything. The Dark Ancient, Little One... Um, it's going to hit the other friendly golems too, because it can only control the Maelstrom of Blades so much. I am disappointed. The Slicing Golem spins around hitting everything for like 30, but Mora shoots off the last of the ice and Angel finishes off the Fire Suppression Unit. This obviously f***ed him up. The Golem is falling apart and collapsing, but though you see bits of dark energy leaking out, it's kind of anticlimactic. There's no big light show, no moaning wail like the others. He made the jump. Kill them all! We have determined that you are not authorized, authorized personnel. Oh, God damn it! Kill them all! Too many convicts have been detected. Kill them all! Kill them all! Who's next? Ungrateful. Un... 
grateful. It doesn't react as well when it's low on power. Suddenly everything seems a lot scarier. Isn't there like a cure spell that works on robots? Yes, repair spells. They're on my actual spell list. Think it'd work on that thing? I can try. I'm going to delay my initiative until one of them makes an aggressive move towards me, then I'll kill it. There seems to be some kind of confusion. This one's just rocking back and forth. This one wanders over and beats on the already destroyed fire suppression unit. This one, uh, the one that's badly damaged, limps over and attacks a little one, because... I don't know. Take 19 damage and 4 charges. You can use the rod to turn those charges into healing. Do I have that? Oh, yeah. You don't need to do it urgently. They do persist for several rounds, even if no more charges hit to refresh them. 1d6 per charge. Not terrible. You could build up more charges, then heal for more. It's not even that. It's getting rid of the charges before they turn into damage. You think you can repair this thing? Probably. Yeah, sure I can. I'm supremely confident. Okay, good enough for me. I Elder Mountain Hammer the power source. Okay. He can't control the controller if it's got no power. Raven will fix it later. I didn't think that's what you meant! If we turn off the f***ing thing, he's got nothing. No, 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 no. It's done. No, oh, f you said you could fix it. Yeah, assuming it was still working. Draven thought you meant, can you walk over and cast Heal for Robots, like, as a gesture of good faith or something? Bring it back to full power. No, no, I meant shut her down completely, we wipe out everybody, then repair and bring it back up later. It's, it's fun. You get more XP if you kill everything. You don't actually. You have the same XP for overcoming problems. Why did I say anything about attacking a controller? We don't know that! We have to assume that! Now we're working for the Dark Ancient! Not if we shut it down completely. He didn't destroy this. He only damaged it. That's because we killed him too fast! Maybe! I don't know! This logic worked for me. Whatever, it's in character. I wish, in character, I could be like, What the f*** are you doing? I'm serious. I know Raven's having an egg over there, but we shut down the whole f***ing building, then fix it later. Little one, Elder Mountain. <laughs> hammers the already cracked column for 39 damage, ignoring hardness, exposing more of the inner workings such that you could even see down to the lava 30 feet below. This generator is definitely shut down completely, and the light bars in the room turn red. Code red, risk group. Wait, what code red? There's still power? There's still some kind of power, but it's a lot darker in here, and redder. There's still reserve power. There's a backup supply. But the lights went out the first time, when he hit it. Briefly, then came back up, but a lot dimmer. I thought you said this was a major power source. It was. Sorry, guys. I thought it was going to kill everything. In fact, the minions do shut down, as does a damaged golem, but not the sphere. It's a higher priority. So this has limited its capabilities. I'm still actually quite disturbed about the whole, we've done it. We have done it. Alpha was trying to get the controller to think we were working with him. The controller was already confused about you guys. A lot of the stuff did not match up. I'm sure it's not confused anymore. Yeah. That's a small drawback of my plan. I've really got to work on my impulse control. So we've got to find another one of these power sources and shut it down. Actually, you've got the ability to pick up where Alpha is. You have the locate creature. That's right. I forgot about that. That's an interesting point. He's currently in this direction from you. He doesn't need line of sight. Fair knows he's right here, hiding in one of these. Before we follow him, can you hit me with that healing wand? I've got four charges, don't want to get exploded. I'll heal you, I'm sure as hell not running off on my own. But at that moment, one of the doors on the north side of the room starts opening. The hard way, something trying to force it up from the inside. How are their eyes? Just out of curiosity. Normal, white glows. So, I'm not confident they're peaceful. <laughs> I'm confident they're not. <laughs> are those missile pods on their shoulders? These are not maintenance robots. What's your most powerful unit, we ask? What is Polaron's most powerful unit? Next time on Tales from My D&D Campaign. There's a monitor in here, too. I can see it in GM's eyes. Oh, yes. Yes, it'd be easy to justify that from a plot standpoint. I've been waiting for you for like five months. You guys weren't supposed to f*** off in the desert. Honestly, a monitor could have been following us all the way here. If he's got decent stealth skill, I wouldn't see him. And if he's stealthy and invisible, Angel probably wouldn't either. I've actually been powering up my fireball. I started five months ago. Oh my god. I'm not sure how much longer I can hold it.